Okay, hello everyone. I don't have much time, uh, so it might be that we won't have time for questions. But let's see, I'll try to be fast. <coughs> so, I'm Nikolai Kondrashov. I work at the uh, common login team at Red Hat. I focus on user session recording project and I maintain free Redis packages in the rest of my time. I also created and maintain the Digiment project which works on uh, supporting graphics tables in Linux but not Wacom ones, the other ones. Uh, I do embed it as a hobby and electronics. So uh, this user session recording project we are create, trying to create a solution which would let <coughs> people, well, administrators record what users see on and type into the terminal, uh, record what the co commands they executed, which files they accessed, and control centrally where, what, and who is recorded. So we're also trying to, to create a system which would store centrally what, what is recorded and uh, secure that. <coughs> and it would also allow searching, correlating, and uh, playing back those recordings. So we, since our um, <coughs> identity management solution started being popular, uh, our customers started asking if, uh, if they could have session recording. And they were asking that because for some organizations they are required by law, for example in the US, to record sessions on the sensitive systems, <coughs> like in hospitals, for example, or in government organizations. Also banks are very strict about accesses to some systems, as you can guess. And they want to find, generally want to find out who broke something or stole something and how they did it. And uh, <coughs> they need to sometimes just trace problems or support users, that, although that is a minor use case. So there is a huge number of uh, commercial offerings for this and they start with the just simply hardware boxes which you can buy and put on your network and connect to network cables, give it the keys and then it will start intercepting your sessions, SSH sessions, or database connections, and log that. Uh, then there are software packages which you can install on your own jump servers, or your own proxies, or software packages you can install on your target system where the sessions are happening. And often the, these systems are integrated with identity management solutions, or even a part of identity management solutions. So <coughs> they usually have central storage, yes, and the playback and the searching for comments executed and the files accessed, etc. They, yeah, they record keystrokes and, uh, for example, on Windows they can record your desktop and comments and applications that you started in Windows or in even uh, URLs you accessed in the browser. But there are practically no open source solutions that are suitable for this. So the most, the oldest one is script, but it is not security oriented, it's rather for recording your own sessions and uh, uh, if you want to use it in a security setting, you have to really, really uh, lock it down. And uh, I saw some installations where uh, that was done and that required a lot of work and setting up separate systems so that they could be locked like jump servers. Uh, sudo IO login is getting quite close, but it has no centralization. It, it doesn't stream your recording anywhere, but it, it allows uh, playing back the recordings and searching for them, but only on your local machine. If you want to centralize that, you need to rsync that somewhere regularly or do something like that, and you cannot see the sessions that are in progress on a remote, on a remote system. So. Uh, there is the closest thing, perhaps, is the TTY audit system, which is a part of uh, audit subsystem in the kernel, and it's integrated into the TTY layer in the kernel. And it allows login uh, user input, but not user output. Since it's, uh, it's logged into the audit log, you can basically easily just forward it together with the audit logs, which was the idea that we liked. <coughs> I'll try. <coughs> Just let me um, <coughs> so we took that idea a little bit further 
storing the sessions in the logs and <coughs> we want to use the logs for delivery and for use logging tools for centralization and also for streaming the recordings <coughs> because that would let people not only easily uh, correlate the events between the recordings that was happening on the screen and the events that are captured in the logs but also have the all the infrastructure ready for the installation and uh, <coughs> have less maintenance overhead and uh, install it easier. <coughs> so we were thinking at first doing this in the kernel, uh, extending the TTY audit subsystem, but we decided to go with the user space because it's faster to develop and uh, we could iterate faster and have results faster, but then we later found out from the audit team that the uh, audit subsystem is not quite performant enough to allow streaming of the output. <coughs> we did not test it, but yeah, that was what the audit team said. Uh, so, and naturally, we, we are using the audit logs for the rest of the recording, recording the comments and the process executed because you can enable all that by uh, enabling recording. by enabling recording the sys calls <coughs> in the audit system. So our target is enterprise ready as those commercial systems are and as our uh, identity management system is. And uh, we plan to have storage in Elasticsearch and uh, control the where to record and who to record and what to record with pre-APA and SSD. We are going to build a web UI component which is which should be embeddable into other <coughs> systems like CloudForms or OpenShift. And at this moment, we work on this web UI in Cockpit. This storage, not in Elasticsearch, but in Journal, the SystemD Journal. Uh, we have some code in the SSD which allows controlling that, and we are going to build that into the interface part into Cockpit. And you can also configure this manually without a SSD. And the configuration and playback are going to be done in, in Cockpit. So Cockpit is a, <coughs> is a server management web UI with a kind of a new approach. So one of the ideas, the big ideas of them is that when you log into that web UI, you actually log into the system, meaning that there is a process started for your login on the, on the Linux system, and uh, this process has your session. It's an actual Linux session with all, the, with all the attributes of a Linux session. It's not like some proxy user for everyone that everyone share. It's actually your user running on that system. And it also <coughs> works at the, one of the ideals of them. They actually have official ideals. One of the ideals is that you, you can go between controlling your system with the browser and the command line without problem. They can go back and forth and change something here in the command line and it appears in, the, in your web browser and vice versa. And it's not like when you, once you start doing, doing the web UI, you cannot go back to the command line because web UI would break. <coughs> So they also have support for managing remote hosts through SSH, through the same web UI, you can control several hosts. And they have very frequent releases, something like uh, every two weeks. And their CI system, which is pretty advanced, allows them to do that. And I would recommend uh, seeing uh, Steph Walters talk about how they do that. It's called, uh, I think it's, right nowadays it's called Cyborg Teams. <clears throat> so, a little demo. We're going to log in into a system where, with the user which is recorded. We'll, uh, we'll do something on the terminal and we'll see the session appear in the cockpit UI and we'll be able to play it back as it goes along and do some nice stuff with it. So, I hope you can see something here. So, <clears throat> first of all, let's, let me log in to cockpit. So this is, uh, that was, that is too far. Let's go back. So there is a list of recordings. 
sorry, the, the resolution is very small, so not everything fits. But there is one recording here. And once, uh, <coughs> as soon as I log in here with a little delay, we'll see a new session appear. Mm, let's use another, oh, this user is fine. So there is the session appearing there, and uh, we can already open it and start playing it back. Let me just uh, scroll it a little bit so it fits it. it. <laughs> just a moment. I'll make it a little wider so it fits. Yeah, okay. So this is good enough. So you can see that we are here, already caught up to this session. So let's uh, edit something and let me just sync it up so it's closer to our time. Uh, let's uh, do some editing. Oh, there is some problem. Hmm, I wonder. Okay, uh, so let's try something more interesting. <coughs> yeah, that works. So everything is preserved, and timing is preserved, and you can uh, see what's going on, and uh, you can also do this. Window resizes are also preserved. So, <coughs> we can uh, rewind the session at any time and start looking into it whatever we want, however we want. We can change the speed of the playback, the usual stuff. We can skip pauses. We can, for example, go and uh, skip a long wait here using this button. And we can step through the rec recording step by step and see what was happening. So, and at the moment we are working on uh, positioning the uh, recording in time randomly. So, further on, so the recording setup is uh, quite simple. Basically, we, uh, you set, <coughs> change the user's shell to a special program so that when the user log in, logs in instead of the shell, that process starts and uh, creates a PTY under which it starts the actual shell and then whatever is passing between the PTY and the actual TTY gets recorded uh, and encoded in JSON and then logged. We also cut the uh, stream into pieces which are limited by size and by time so that we don't wait too long to, for, for a message to fill up and uh, we don't make a message too big. <coughs> so JSON schema is uh, optimized for streaming uh, and searching, and for streaming it's optimized by you know cutting the cutting the stream by time and just shipping it. And uh, for searching, we separate it input and output in separate JSON fields. Uh, we sub store the time and separate as well, so that the the input is like the way you typed it, and the output is the way it appeared on the screen. Nothing is intermingled. We preserve the resizes. Uh, we preserve all the data, including binary. And if, uh, for example, if you, somebody dumped a document on the screen and then went away with it, uh, like like a LibreOffice document, so <coughs> we, pres we preserve all I/O. And if there is something which is not valid UTF-8, which cannot be stored in JSON as is, we put it into byte arrays in JSON. So when we log to 
the journal, we take some fields out of the JSON message and we put it into a journal, real journal field so that we can look them up and match the messages and match particular recordings like the, uh, the recording ID which is unique for the host and uh, then using this recording ID we can match a whole stream of uh, log messages for a particular recording. We can also match for uh, audit session ID and for the user which was recorded that is necessary because the, uh, <coughs> the recording process runs at CTU ID to protect itself. So uh, the, the cockpit journal interface is quite simple but reliable. Uh, it simply runs journal CTL on the host and uh, asks it to output JSON and then supplies any necessary matches and options that, that the, API the API user requests like match those messages or limit by time and give me this many messages. So for listing recordings in the browser here, where was it? Yeah, we go here. But when we open this list, we uh, tell it to match by the set UID, UID. Uh, then if you're filtering, for example, by user where the match the user field, we limit since and until if we limit the time that we want to display. <clears throat> and we tell uh, journal CTL to return all the lines and to follow any updates so that we can update the list as you saw as, as the journal grows. So we read everything, we find the unique recording IDs and then we just make a list. For playing back is uh, quite similar, so we still filter by said UID or UID because we want to trust what we get from the journal. Uh, we match by recording ID and we do the rest of the stuff the same and we decode, read the entries and decode them in background while you're already able to start playing back. <coughs> the playback is done by simply feeding what we recorded on the terminal to our terminal emulator written in JavaScript. At the moment we're using term GS and we'll probably stay with it and we'll probably need to modify it for more features. So uh, we need to get audit logs uh, to in there as well because we need to know the actual session boundaries when the user logged in and logged out because uh, not, not, there is not always output at the end or at the start of the session. Uh, we need to get comments executed from there and that file accessed. Uh, <coughs> there is a problem that, yeah, journal D logs audit events by itself, but the audit team says that under load it can lose messages and also that audit data is raw, for example, the, it has no user names. So it only has user IDs and if, since, if some time passed since you logged that, you might not be able to convert those. For example, just one example. Uh, you might not be able to get the username from that user ID that happened a week ago. Uh, then, <clears throat> so we made a tool for that in particular for the enterprise solution that's called OShape and it parses uh, the logs and converts those users, user IDs into user names, etc. And it also normalizes the logs extracting uh, who did what, did, did the thing on, on which object they did it and what was the action, what was the result, the normal security stuff that the, um, everyone describes in all the requirements for the logs. And we log that stuff in JSON or in XML in that tool. So, <clears throat> that is done, all these transformations are done mostly using the uh, libo, lib AU parse, which is part of audit project and uh, we work with the audit team to make that nice and uh, properly. So the idea is that uh, we can get this, these logs, all shape logs into journal or we can, or we can get uh, the journal logs like the, the ones that the journal logs from the audit system, but the problem is that anyway, journal doesn't support partial field matches. You can only match against the full journal field. You cannot match like for a string. And I guess that has to do with the way that journal indexes the fields. <coughs> for that reason, at this moment, when we implement this searching for commons, 
that were executed or files that were accessed will be inconvenient because you will have to search for exactly the same, exactly the file path or exactly the common that you wanted. Well, that, that doesn't make much sense. And searching for I/O in the whole stream of the like in the input or in the output of the terminal would be also impossible. So we'll have to figure that out. Either perhaps we talk to journal people and uh, I don't know, ask them to implement searching partial streams or just grab that. But that will probably be pretty slow. So next challenge is that uh, we have a new design which we discussed with cockpit team, and this is more or less okay -ish to them. So uh, we are going to try to integrate the playback with the logs page uh, and do it in a nice way so that when you scroll the logs you can see the sessions that were active at that point in time in the logs. Like you scroll and it's like there was this user logged in and you scroll further the user logged in, this session disappeared. And we also add a kind of a window to list all sessions and also allow playing back the recordings right there on the logs page while you, for example, play back so that the logs would scroll by as things were happening and you can pause and see what was happening in the logs at that particular point. And on pause you can, for example, gr drag the uh, time slider and see the logs move as well and or drag the logs and see the recording move as well. <coughs> And we'll need to also do the full screen playback so that you could see a big, like, big terminal for, because you saw that we can't take over the screen. We need to see the same thing here, but we need to provide the option to see uh, big terminals and see all the, all the details. We have uh, already some code to do zoom in, zoom out, and panning of that terminal, but that's obviously inconvenient to do all the time if you want to watch the session. <coughs> So the, another thing is that we need to integrate with the accounts page where we would like to see uh, like sessions for a user which were happening in, in, like, in the last time and you can uh, click them and open them and play them back. But we also need to be able to enable or disable recording for particular users and groups which will be done through SSSD hopefully uh, through the, uh, that debus interface with, uh, with, with which people are not apparently very happy, as Jakub says. Uh, so, yeah, there are another, other things, interesting challenges, like that there are multiple, in theory, there are still multiple terminal types that people use, and they can differ slightly in the language that they use. So, for example, they have a tool to play back those recordings on command line, which can play back from journal or from Elasticsearch. And you need to supply it, like run it on the same terminal on which you record it, on the same, same terminal type on which you record it, otherwise there can be some confusion. Uh, for that reason, uh, since we just feed the data to the terminal, if something goes like, if the session terminated for the user, or if you record early, your terminal after playback can end up in a messy solution, you will have to reset it. Uh, there is the, um, <coughs> the web UI playback also it's written in, in JavaScript, and uh, not all the features are implemented there with the terminal features. Of course, like people normally don't use features like double width font or double height font or graphics on the terminal, God forbid. Uh, but anyway, we cannot like, make sure that we implement all the features for all the possible terminals. So for that reason, the idea is to actually embed a terminal emulator into the recording part so that uh, we can always present the same terminal type to the program being recorded. We can always see, uh, we can always record the same kind of terminal language and we can limit the uh, number of features that we need to implement in the terminal emulator running in the browser. And at the moment, the only candidate that we have is libvterm, which is used by Nailwind project. Uh, another thing is that uh, we will need to convert character encodings because uh, JSON only supports UTF-8 and Elasticsearch only supports UTF-8 because they support JSON. And some people still don't use UTF-8, namely, like, for example, Japanese, because of cultural uh, issues. So we'll need to convert that somehow, and so, if, so we can preserve the binary data, we'll need to probably store both the converted data and the binary data, but make that optional. Uh, playback seeking is fun because 
all the terminal states depends on what was be before it. So if something set the color of the background at the start and you did not record that or you did not play that back, uh, you might not even see your characters if they are the same color. <coughs> so the idea was to do snapshots in the playback because we have access to terminal emulator internals. You can take regular snapshots of the state and then restore them quickly and then play back a little bit after. But since we are leaning towards embedding the terminal emulator anyway, we'll uh, probably just take those snapshots while we record and we'll have that ready in the log so that we can rewind. At least that's the hope. So if you want to try it, the cockpit UI, uh, and if you're brave enough, go check out that branch, read the hackingmd file. It says uh, that's the upstream hackingmd file. It says how to how to build and run cockpit. It's not that hard, but there might be some tricks. Then uh, the rest is easy. You just install tlog. There is a fresh RPM there on that link, and if you look for tlog terminal logger, you will find it. Uh, I will upload those slides. So you just install the RPM, or you build the fresh tlog, and put, create a user with this shell, and then log in as that user, and go check out this uh, page on your local host once you get the cockpit running. And this session should appear there. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have time for questions? Yeah, we have a couple minutes for questions. Any questions? Please press the button so that we get some light. The right one. Oh, this one works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Yes, yes, please. Questions. If you have to change the user shell to that, how do you configure, how the user itself <coughs> configure their shell? Uh, so, <coughs> the question is, if we have to force the shell upon the user, how the user then able to configure the shell? First of all, uh, you can, in general, you can change the global shell that tlog, that, that recording uses. That obviously not doesn't work if you have multiple users with different preferences. Then we have, uh, <coughs> a feature where you can make symlinks to that shell, which you, to several symlinks to that shell, the specific names including the path to the shell that you want to run. And if you assign that symlink as the user's shell, then the program will figure it out which shell you want it to assign. So it will be, the process by itself is called tlog rec session. If you make a symlink tlog rec session shell bin bash, or bin z shell, and then assign that shell to the user, then when it starts, it will figure out that it needs to run that shell. And otherwise, you can pass the shell through the environment variable, and that's what we use in the SSD, where there is a feature that you can say, like, record these, these users and these groups, and then SSD, through tricks of its own NSS and PAM modules, substitutes that shell, and you don't notice anything. Any more questions? Yes, please. Yeah, um, are you aware of a project called Teleport? which is essentially a modified SSH server to also provide feature-like session recording. You haven't mentioned those in, in, in the like, related work uh, section. So the question was, am I aware of the Teleport project, which is a SSH session with features like session recording? Uh, per, I'm not aware of this specific thing. I, I'm aware of other things like sudo sh or something that do that. The point is that uh, that SSH server only allows recording SSH sessions. This solution allows recording console logins, SSH session, telnet session, whatever you want. And we would like to have a library which then projects like OpenShift be, would be able to embed into their system to record like its sessions in in containers, inside containers. If, because some people were asking that this is some idea that we were entertaining. Anyone? Yes, please. So the question was, if, if, if does this solution require any kernel parts or not? That is the last question, I'm sorry. Uh, no, it doesn't require any kernel parts at all. It's just uh, you download this, you install it, and that's it. No kernel parts. Thank you, everyone.